Hi guys, it is a fine day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on it's now Friday evening, August 16th, 2019, and uh learned the little dog and I are thinking we're never going to get back to New Hampshire. But at some point, New Hampshire will beckon, but since it is Friday, I'm gonna do what I do every Friday. And what I have never done from inside a gas-sucking monster truck, and that is to bring you this week's uh, mongabay.com roundup of the collapsing planet. And uh, good Lord, where to start on this? I have not been on the mainstream media much all week, and here I am on uh, the <clears throat> Manga Bay. And there we're gonna start out with a real knee slapper from the Peruvian Amazon jungle. I, uh, as you may know, I have lived in the Peruvian Amazon jungle and we are finally, we're starting off with a little bit of apocalyptic optimism here. Yes, Rhett Butler, you might be an apocalyptic optimist for starting off your roundup of a collapsing planet with an article on high tech, high tech to the rescue in Peruvian Amazon. This is uh, talking about all those illegal gold mines that I was reporting on over 10 years ago uh, in the Peruvian Amazon. But don't worry, it has finally happened. We have high tech to the rescue. Yes, the apocalyptic conservationists are hoping not only that they will be able to protect Manu National Park and its buffers. I was down there, that's exactly where I was reporting from. But that they may actually be able to one day help remediate and restore the wrecked habitat. Yes, thank you for today's laugh. Uh, and as long as we are uh, enjoying some hopium, let's go from Peru to Indonesia for some real hopium. Indonesia forest clearing ban Indonesia forest clearing ban is made permanent but is being labeled propaganda. Yes, a moratorium on granting permits to clear primary forest for plantations or logging has been made permanent by Indonesian President Joko Widodo. Yes, I know when someone named Joko Widodo tells me he's going to do something to save the planet, I take Joko Widodo pretty seriously, but you will not believe this. Activists are calling this propaganda, saying that forest loss and wildfires have actually increased. Huh. Do you think so? They've highlighted several loopholes in the moratorium that still allows developers to continue exploiting forest areas without consequence. Activists are also skeptical that a newer moratorium on granting permits for oil palm cultivation will really do much to help slow the rate of deforestation. Yes, imagine uh, being skeptical of a Joko Widodo proclamation to save the planet. So, uh, okay, speaking of, uh, we're going to continue. Well, I guess this isn't hopium. This is reality. <clears throat> Germany 
cuts almost $40 million in environmental funding to Brazil, Germany will withdraw uh, it's 35 million euros, right about 40 million dollars to Brazil due to the country's lack of commitment to curbing deforestation in the Amazon rainforest shown by the administration of far-right President Jair Bozonaro from Joko Widodo to Bozo. Yes. Um, <clears throat> some experts have expressed concern that Germany's cut could cause other developed nations to withdraw Brazil funding. Uh, well, it, you know, guys, it's one of these, uh, so what? If, uh, you know, with Bozo Naro down there, uh, declaring war not only on the Amazon rainforest, but any environmental groups, uh, particularly those from outside Brazil who have no moral authority to comment on how Brazil is uh, treating the Amazon rainforest. So as long as Germany has no moral authority, I guess they also don't need to be uh, be throwing in the cash as well. Okay, we have, now we're going back to uh, where I was back in 2009, back to this Peruvian uh, gold mining crisis in the very same region where I was. Uh, that's Peru's Madre de Dios, otherwise known as the Mother of God. The Mother of God has become a global poster child for deforestation and environmental devastation from an unchecked gold rush. Um, an area the size of New York City has been obliterated off the planet, oh, since 2009, since I was down there in 2009, an area the size of New York City has been obliterated off the planet. Uh, so, uh, the absolute joke of the Peruvian government doing anything uh, about it. Uh, as focusing on reducing mining in one region just shifts the problem to other areas. Hmm, imagine that. Uh, this is one of these Indians, oh, from the Amarakari Communal Reserve, right where I was reporting from. Uh, this, uh, this Amarakari Indian, all right, have, quote, have now, the gold miners, quote, have now shown up on our doorstep. The government has simply kicked an ant's nest. Now, ants are running all over, making trouble elsewhere, especially for us. And I'm surprised we're just hearing this because when 10 years ago, when I was in Amarakari, all of these gold mines were already at Amarakari's door. Anyway, I'm not sure what that's about. Gee, you're gonna go over to the country of Nigeria. Nigeria finds itself at the heart of the illegal pangolin trade. Uh, good God, is the, the, the population of pangolins must have been about 100 billion because uh, for 10 years I've been talking about the millions of pangolins being slaughtered and now strong uh, 
first they, they had already been traded openly in bushmeat markets in uh, sub-Saharan Africa but of course now strong demand from Asia has attracted organized criminal syndicates to set up pangolin trafficking networks. Jesus. Uh, Chinese buyers will pay up to $20 for a pangolin, a relative fortune for local bushmeat traders and then they sell them in China for $250. So you buy your pangolin in Nigeria for 20 bucks and sell it in China for 250. Yes. Okay, here's the latest pipe dream on trying to uh, reintroduce rhinos into places where the poachers have killed all the rhinos so the poachers will have more new rhinos to kill. Yep. Uh, good luck on that. Okay, we're gonna go over to Honduras for anybody wondering what the rainforest destruction report from Honduras is. You will never believe this. You will not believe this. Rainforest destruction accelerates in Honduran UNESCO site. Powerful drug traffickers and landless farmers continue to push cattle ranching and illegal logging operations deeper into the Rio Platano Biosphere Reserve, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yes, this uh, UNESCO Biosphere Reserve has already lost more than 10% of its tree cover more than a third of that within the last three years and preliminary data for the first half of this year indicate the reserve is experiencing another heavy round of forest lost this year. There you go. Imagine that. Uh, are we in New Hampshire yet? Yes. We are in New Hampshire. We have crossed into New Hampshire since I started this roundup. Okay. We are now going to uh, go from Honduran deforestation to global fisheries data. I've been hanging out with a Maine lobsterman quite a bit this week learning about global fisheries data. Now they start off with a question, how did we get into a situation where fisheries are allowed to destroy the fish populations from which, given prudent management, high catches could be extracted on a sustainable basis? Ha! Huh. Having more boats in the water does not produce more fish and neither do subsidies which enable fishing operations to break even even as they over exploit the populations upon which their businesses depend. It is as if we encourage hunters to kill more geese and replace their golden eggs with a subsidy. Yes, uh, there you go. Do you think so? We're going to go from overkilling of fish to overkilling of big cats. Pangolins to fish to big cats. Big cat trade driven by demand for traditional Asian 
medicine. Wow. Imagine that. Bones, blood, and other body parts of big cats are made into products such as balms, capsules, gels, and wines. Wines. That's that tiger bone wine they're talking about that practitioners of traditional Asian medicine believe to be able to cure all sorts of ailments. Though, in fact, they have been found to have exactly zero provable health benefits. Yes. Uh, anyway, I think we've been hearing this story for what, 5,000 years? All right. Here, uh, looking at the international trade in endangered species has now proliferated to the tune of more than 250 billion dollars per year. Yep, if you want to make money in the collapse of a planet, uh, the big cat slash pangolin slash fish slash rhino horn. Anyway, okay. Uh, and a story about the Goldman Environmental Prize. Uh, well, I thought they just announced those recently. Anyway, all right, we haven't had our Bozo Naro story of the week. Well, I guess we touched on it, but we're going to step away from deforestation to what is Bozo Naro up to with pesticides. Bozo Naro approves 290 new pesticide products for use in just seven months. The Bozo Naro government has approved 290 new pesticide products for use. That comes out to 1.4 new pesticides being dumped onto Brazil each day. Some of those approved chemicals are banned in the EU, US, and elsewhere. And Brazil is already one of the largest users of pesticides in the world. And you can imagine what that means uh, as the Amazon forest gets turned into one giant soy plantation. Okay, we just heard about the pangolin uh, cartel. Now, is the rhino horn trade a cartel? That is exactly what the rhino trade is. Okay. Uh, good Lord, no collapse rant would be complete without looking at the collapsing population of sea cucumbers. Uh, with fewer species of sea cucumbers being recorded in catches, Sri Lanka, yes, is calling for increased protection of sea cucumbers. Yes. Experts say there is good precedent for believing for one second that listing sea cucumbers, I guess, as endangered will raise awareness and spur action to protect sea cucumbers. I am quite sure that uh, action will be spurred to protect sea cucumbers. No doubt about it. From okay, sea cucumbers 
uh, two, I'm going to skip that one, uh, anyway guys, there is a lot on the plate here, and I'm 20 minutes into this, and I'm thinking about a pizza, so, all right, let's go back to Peru. Uh, where we find invaders claim their first victim at the Macoya Forest Investigation Center. Yes, well, um, I guess they shot this guy, but I guess he did not die uh, as the invaders are celebrating. Oh, he did die, I'm sorry. We can say goodbye to forest, Peruvian forest defender Julio Cristando Lopez. Yes, who has been assassinated by uh, the planet eaters. Uh, yep, that's what you get when you try to protect the forest in Peru, you get a bullet through your head. Yes. Uh, okay, this is Manga Bay Spin. I've already done a couple of videos on this. Uh, this new IPCC report uh, examining the interactions between climate change and land use which has found that agriculture, forestry, and other land use are responsible for nearly a quarter of all man-made greenhouse gas emissions. Yes, they do. Um, we now need the political will and action from governments, the private sector, and don't forget consumers to change the way our global society values its forests, to stimulate forest protection, and to embrace sustainable forest management and forest restoration while reversing the pressure on forest. And we need to do this without displacing that pressure to other ecosystems. Anyway guys, uh, I could go on with this, but uh, I think we get the point and I really do encourage, they're asking people to come on and take a brief survey about a reader interest survey to deepen our understanding and inform the fact-based independent journalism you are interested in. Manga Bay is seeking your feedback. Please take this five-minute survey so we can best serve you and all of our readers, and I need to do that. I really do need to do that, but I'm going to wrap up this week's Collapse of the Planet Roundup from Manga Bay. You've heard it all before. And as the gorilla says, scratching her head, what will it be next week? And I'm going to get out there and uh, enjoy this collapsing planet in the lovely state of New Hampshire.